In this video today, I'm going to show you guys how to scratch coat a wall for stone veneer. So, right here, there are probably 20 different ways to start your job. So, for this part, wooden post, right? We need to make sure there's a barrier here uh, so the mortar's not eating away at this wood. Okay, so that's what this felt paper is. You really put that on all the time if you're doing any sort of wood or anything. Felt paper first. Then we're putting this wire on here. Um, with this one, I uh, used a nail gun. Um, it was easy, I could put the nails right into it and I nailed the absolute crap out of it. You do not want to be skimpy at all with the nails. This is the only thing holding these things on there. But we're only going 32 inches high. I have the wire wrapped around. It's holding it tight, right? There's no way that this wire is gonna pull off. So anytime I have flat wood like this, I'm using a nail gun, lots of nails, boom, boom, boom all the way down. What I'm gonna do is uh, like evaluate what is going on like on the wall. So I had plywood and then half inch foam board on here. And what I needed to do was create some sort of barrier for my mortar, right? So I put this felt paper on here, stapled it loosely just so it would stay because you can't really staple in the foam, but it's just, it's just holding it there. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is get this stuff called wire lath. And since I had foam on here, I had to get screws and washers because if nails are gonna go through there, it'll pull out. And if you don't have a washer, it'll go right through these holes. So you need washers. I prefer the big ones, but I bought the entire store out of washers. So that's why they're all different sizes. Um, they work the same. One thing you're gonna wanna know is when you put them up, I start on the bottom, right? and work my way up. If you notice up here, I got a space, right? I'll leave that little three inches open. That's because you wanna overlap it that way. I'm gonna get a little piece of wire to show you what you should be doing. This isn't gonna go here, but this is why I do this. You, when you put it up here, you pull this out and slip it in. You overlap them, right? And you want this part out so the mud can sit on top of it. If you put it this way, over top, there's no shelf, and it gives it a place for the mud just to fall out and not be as strong. So all down here, I have a place for that mud to rest and not fall out. Here's another thing you're gonna wanna know. There are two sides to this wire, right? And the way I look at it is like this. You wanna be able to climb this stuff with your fingertips, right? You can literally hang on this if your fingers weren't. You can see there's, it's angled down. So when you put the mud in there, it'll hold it. If you do it the other way, right? Let's not do it on that, we'll do it over here. The other way, right? You would slip right out of this. There's nothing holding you because it's opposite of how it should be, right? You put the mud in here and it'll just droop out, right? It won't hold it. So that's why it's gotta be flipped around Make sure it's the right way so the mud doesn't fall down and fall out of your, your wall. Measurements. So I'm getting up on my ladder now, getting up on the wall. Got my space here. You get a measurement. It calls for 30 and a half. Now you don't want to make it 30 and a half because it's going to get all pinched and all that kind of stuff in here. So I'm going to just cut a quarter inch off each side. That gives me an eighth inch of space each side. And, uh, so we're gonna go 30 and a quarter. You're gonna need wire lath, something to cut it with. I use this battery operated Makita chop saw and a metal blade. You're gonna need stuff to measure with and mark with. Tape measure, marker, and a level to make sure your cuts are gonna be straight. So I got my measurement, mark it. Mark it a lot because it's really hard to see. I should have probably got like a red marker or something, but it's really challenging to see the lines. So don't lose that. Boom, ready to go. So you got your piece, right? You come over here, where it goes, make sure it fits. Oh wow, imagine that, it does. <laughs> then you're gonna put it up a little higher, pull your wire out. Ah, see it? It's stuck pretty easy. It's overlapped, good, good, space, good. 
And uh, yeah, I like to put a little holder in there. That way it don't fall on me. First, okay, so I'll go right across here. I try to space them out like about every six inches. And the reason why I have so many as you're looking around, because this is the only thing that is going to be holding my stone against the wall. So you want to screw the absolute crap out of it. So this is just something I've learned with time, right? You want to have no spaces, no floppiness. Like if you notice, like you hit this, like down here even, there's no give in this wire, right? That's completely sucked fast to the wall, right? So I start here, angle, 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 and it, it pushes all the slack out to one side, but like, that's what you're going for. So I always start in the bottom right here, and I always try to off center them. I'm going sideways, right, on this angle, and I am staggering them. So like they're two here, one here, Two here, one here, I'm staggering them to get the most suction fast to this wall. So two here, one here. So you see, this is how I do it when it's directly on wood or plywood down here, there's plywood, nail gun, right? Boom, when you're putting it on foam, we have all these screws. The only time you don't have to add wire is when you're putting it directly on block. So I'm. It's just bare block, there's no paint on here, there's nothing. I mean, it is bare concrete block, and you can put your scratch coat directly on this and, and get laying. You can do that on concrete walls. The only reason you would have to put wire on something like this is if it was coated with some sort of sealer or paint or anything. So if it is painted or sealed or anything in any sort of way, it prevents that mortar from bonding to it so it's like a barrier that won't allow it and if you do lay it on a superior wall or painted block or anything like that you'll put it up you put the stone on there and it'll just whoop, fall right off i've seen it probably a dozen times so don't ever ever put a scratch coat on a painted block wall or a superior wall without wire lath first here are all the materials you're going to need if you're scratch coating a wall um obviously you're going to need some sort of mortar i use uh, quick Crete veneer stone mortar. It already has a lot of bonding properties and stuff in it. It's just really good for stone. Um, I got rolls of nails, screws and washers, and felt paper. Here is my stone veneer. I got window sills. I got flats. I got corners. They're all boxed up right now and you can't see them. Uh, this is all fake stone, right? And uh, that's all real stone. I have different sections going on here. That wall's real stone. And all of the posts and everywhere else around the house are the fake stone. Now we're actually gonna start putting the mortar on the wall. So what we're gonna need for this is a trowel and a uh, tile, tile trowel. Some people use just a normal flat edged, uh, like finished trowel to put it on. And then they take this thing that's called a hawk. It just looks like it's got fingers on it, scratch it. I just cut that out, smooth it up one side, put your lines in it with a tile trowel. Some people don't like it. This is just how I do it. Never had a problem with it. You want a wheelbarrow or a mixing tub or a bucket or something, and you're gonna have your mortar, a hoe, or a paddle bit mixer, and you're gonna need some bonding agent of some kind. So we got some bonding agent here. There's multiple different kinds. This is my favorite, but this is from my last job and I couldn't get any more of it. So then I had the Quickcrete bonding stuff, but we'll start with the stuff I like for this scratch coat. Make sure after you uh, mix it up pretty good, you put this in. So I might add a little bit more, but you don't want to be skimpy with this stuff. This is what's going to hold the stone to the wall. So you really want to give it a lot of a lot of bonding agent. I think this would be enough for this bag. And there's already some like sort of bonding adhesive in the quick creep mortar, the near mortar. So we'll mix this all in, let it set a minute, and then uh, mix it up again. That's called whipping it. So after I let it set, it'll dry up a little bit because there was so it was so dry in the bag, it sucks the moisture out really fast. So we're gonna have to mix it again after five minutes of letting it set here.
So now we're actually going to put the mortar on the wall. You uh, want to have a drop cloth if you're working on anything nice. We're on some nice stamped concrete, so I got a drop cloth so I'm not making a mess, right? So this is all we do. I got this hoe in case it gets too stiff on me, I can mix it up. You take a scoop of mortar, put it on your tile trowel, bring it over here, smooth it up the face. And I usually do four or five scoops. I get it on there pretty, pretty thick. And I always work backwards because it's easier than going forwards. Like if I went the other way, it's just a little bit more challenging. But the biggest thing you're doing this is you want to make sure your mortar is in that wire pretty good. So you're pushing it in there. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to mark this with your lines. You want them going horizontal, right? So we just go over here. Put your, your trowel on there, turn it up pretty high, and put those lines in it. That's pretty much it. You want to make sure you have good thick lines, and uh, so when you stick your stone to it, it doesn't fall down. So that's the point of putting the lines in it. You put the mortar in there, and it holds it from sinking on you. Then you basically just do this everywhere you have wire, and you want to make sure you're just doing exactly what I've been doing, make it a nice spot for that uh, stone to stick fast to your wall. So once this is all done, I'll show you what it should look like. Okay guys, I went out and I bought one of these other things. So this is how everybody else I've ever seen does stone. They are, uh, I don't even know what this is called, like a hawk or something, I don't know. Um, same thing as the tile trowel, right? So these are the lines I made yesterday. I didn't have scaffolding yesterday, that's why I'm up this high. But so these are the lines I have yesterday. They're pretty much the same distance as this. It just, I don't know, it looks a little different when you go up here compared to down there. Um, so I just smoothed it on with uh, this trowel here. You know, smooth it all up here. Doesn't have to be pretty. And then you just take this thing, right? And you just drag it through. Rough it up. Once you're done with your scratch coat, it should look like that. It should not be pretty. It should be rough, just like that looks. And that's it for this video. If you got any questions about this, drop them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, thanks for watching.